What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, giving you guys a quick discussion video. It feels like it's been a millennia since I've done one of these, but then again, how often is it that we get an update to the master rule? It feels like the Yu-Gi-Oh! community is still trying to recover from that absolute bombshell Konami dropped on us that was the revelation of Master Rule 5, and the game is just going to be completely different than what it was during the Vrains era. A lot of your Synchro, Exceed, and fusion decks have been completely unlocked and it's kind of a whole new world for them obviously people have already started talking about cards that are going to benefit things like ultimate to and bahamut shark and i want to continue along with that discussion and really talk about some cards that you might want to consider picking up in preparation for master rule 5 i've tried to get some cards that i think are fairly splashable that can work in a lot of archetypes and strategies and i feel pretty confident about this list so let's go ahead and start Start jumping into cards that I believe you should pick up for Master Rule 5. So my first card is Dimensional Barrier. Talk about a sight for sore eyes. You guys remember when this card was first released in Invasion Vengeance as a secret rare? Alongside Totally Awesome, it was the most expensive card in that entire set, reaching a price of upwards of like $70, $75. I remember when Zodiac and Paleo were like the top dogs in the game. People were even arguing that this card was too broken and maybe it should even be band worthy because obviously if you flipped it at an opportune time against one of those decks you were not going to have to deal with a totally awesome or a pesky zodiac xc monster being dropped on your head during that turn well fast forward to master rule 5 and i feel like it can be very good here obviously synchro xc and fusion strategies are going to be a lot more prevalent and if you find yourself facing off against a deck like karakuri or fluffles decks that have incredibly potent offense decks that can drop two three four fusion or synchro monsters in a turn you flip over dimensional barrier and guess what you don't have to deal with those monsters being summoned on you and at least you know that you've bought yourself a turn now, your opponent will still have the opportunity to summon some Link monsters, but chances are they're not going to be able to summon enough of those to actually kill you. You're going to be stopping a brunt of their offense, and that's really what's most important. Another thing about Dimensional Barrier is it actually can kind of address monsters that are already on the field. This was another reason why the card saw so much play when Zodiac was very powerful. If your opponent already had a Rapier, you could flip it over, you could call XC, and it kind of just became like a breakthrough skill or an, an effect veiler type card against that so if your opponent already has those established monsters it can kind of become I guess even at best, kind of a blanket um, infinite impermanence in that instance. So it can actually negate one of your opponent's monster effects. It's a very solid card, and it's definitely a card that can take away an opponent's full turn if you play it right. Next up is Forbidden Apocrypha. This is a card that actually saw fringe levels of play around the same time as a card like Dimensional Barrier. It was very effective against an archetype like Zodiacs because if they had a couple of XC monsters on the field, you could flip over your Forbidden Apocrypha and take them all out simultaneously. Things that I like about Forbidden Apocrypha is number one, it answers multiple threats on the field for just one card. So when you resolve this, as long as you're not taking out any of your monsters, it's going to be at minimum a plus one. And people obviously like cards that are economical. It does not target in any way, which is pretty awesome. And it doesn't actually destroy the monsters that you're looking to get rid of. It simply sends them to the graveyard. So if your opponent and happens to have a monster that has some type of immunity to destruction or some type of protection to destruction that's not going to be much of an issue obviously as we talked about before Synchro Fusion and XC decks are going to be a lot more prominent in the meta. And this is a card where you can just flip it face up and you can take out multiple of your opponent's threats. I also like this card a little more when you're going second uh, or versus a card like Dimensional Barrier because while Dimensional Barrier can negate those cards your opponent has already on the field, Forbidden Apocrypha does just actually take them out. Now you do have to be kind of careful when you're using this card because if you're playing the same mechanic as your opponent and you're looking 
looking to get rid of some of their cards, you will actually lose yours in the process if you have any of those monsters. Forbidden Apocrypha does not, unfortunately, negate any type of monster effect, so it can be a little touch and go. However, if you use this card even going first at the right time against like a Fluffle or a Karakuri player, you wait for them to have multiple of their big boss monsters on the field. This can be a card that can essentially kind of end their turn, or at least it can be a massive disruption against them. Also, and this is probably not going to be as relevant, but it is not a hard once per turn. So even if you open with multiple copies of this card, if your opponent just keeps trying to power through your back row, it is a card that you can use multiple times to disrupt them. Next up is the Win Witch Engine. And this is an engine that I've always considered to be incredibly powerful. First released in Raging Tempest alongside the powerhouses that were that grass looks greener and Zodiac. The Win Witch Engine went a little under the radar, but once people saw the power of it, they saw the fact that essentially drawing an ice spell could lead you to a one card crystal wing synchro dragon that was immune to destruction people were pretty much on board they were like man this is such a powerful tool at our disposal a couple of things that i love about the wind witch engine is that it does give you that uh that huge crystal wing synchro dragon that not only is a lot of offense but then it gives you some negation against your opponent it does not eat up your normal summon keep in mind that when you special summon ice spell all your other subsequent summons will be special summon so you still have access to your normal summon and it's essentially a very tight package yes you have to obviously designate some spots in your extra deck for this but essentially you're only running about six cards in your main deck and once you hit that ice spell the the payoff is just so damn high obviously this was a strong play even under master rule four but the problem was it kind of locked you into that crystal wing being your only extra deck monster now that is no longer going to be an issue you can summon your crystal wing synchro dragon to your main monster zone and still have the opportunity to go for link summons if you want we've seen this engine be useful in the past on archetypes like trickstar and invoked and even with the new time rules the fact that your ice bell does actually lead you to be able to do massive burn damage i feel like that's something that's uh significant as well you do get burn damage multiple times through the process of making that crystal wing and essentially just drawing that one ice bell can put you so far ahead of your opponent that maybe you end up winning the game if they're playing a very monster effect reliant deck next up is ultra polymerization everybody knows that fusion summoning is my favorite mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh, and i've always thought that this card has so much latent potential it was just released at the wrong time coming out in maximum crisis the last core booster set before master rule 4 in the reigns era it really didn't have that much time to shine however now that fusion summoning is really going back to kind of master rule 3 this card can be absolutely amazing we know because of cards like super polymerization and their impact on the meta how powerful a spell speed forward type effect can be and guess what ultra polymerization is a spell speed forward your opponent cannot respond to it with effects not only does it let you summon or fusion summon a fusion monster as a spell speed forward but then you get to summon those two monsters back from the graveyard since you no longer have to summon your first fusion monster to the extra monster zone this means that you can use those two monsters to fusion summon and again you can use them as xc material you can even use those monsters as a link summon after you fusion summon this is a card that is really going to be amazing for fusion archetypes i'm looking at decks like fluffles imagine being able to summon like a fright for tiger then bring those monsters back go for a claw heap and then fusion summon again sounds pretty damn spicy in my opinion and finally our last card is going to be dark ruler no more now i know a lot of you guys are going to say oh come on cap g everybody already knows about dark ruler no more and that's probably true but i'm not sure if everybody has their copies of this especially considering the way that you look at the meta and the fact that there are a lot of control decks in the meta how good is dark ruler no more against archetypes like orcus where a lot of their monsters are in the graveyard and sky strikers so i feel like there are a lot of people out there who maybe don't even own a play set of dark ruler no more but the reason i'm bringing this card up now is because obviously with synchros 
being unlocked, combo is going to be a lot more prevalent. If you look at what Synchro can do, the sky is still the limit for that mechanic. I mean, yeah, people are going to be able to go back to dropping triple Quasar in a single turn, and you're going to need cards to be able to break that. If you're playing against one of those Turbo Synchro decks, we know that their ending board is going to be with a lot of negations, and Dark Ruler No More is a card that can always answer that. It pretty much doesn't matter what the combo deck puts on the field. If you have Dark Ruler No More and your opponent doesn't have a counter trap, they're just essentially not going to be able to respond, or they're not going to be able to use their monsters on field. So I feel like because of the power that the Synchro decks have always had, and the fact that they'll be returning the form, I think that this is a card where you're definitely going to want to look at putting it in your side deck at least. Anyways, whatever you guys thought, of the five cards and or well i guess the wind witch engine is kind of like a package but the five cards that i talked about leave it in the comment section below if you guys think that i missed out on anything leave that in the comment section below as well thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos